You have two options in this life. Number one is to stay on your current path, use your talents, skills, past achievements, and hard work to crave a huge amount of success for you. And all the belief and persistence is gonna lead you towards conquering your goals. Option two, take a gamble and rethink what it actually means to be authentic. Understand the power of perception. Learn how to seize opportunities and challenge your ethical boundaries to pursue success. Option one is great and all, but option U is taking you out of your comfort zone. The comfort zone that you talk about breaking every single day, but you never do. The rewards of getting out of your comfort zones are great, but you need to be aware that it also can have consequences. June 2012, a TED Live global social psychologist, Amy Cuddy, she gave a speech on body languages. She argued that your posture, the way you stand, as long as it's confidence, it can enhance the way you feel about yourself. It's gonna make you feel more confident. And best of all, all this might have an impact on your future success. And her speech has been viewed over 90 million times. This talk actually originated from a scientific paper that Amy read, and in that scientific study, it was concluded that you can fake it till you make it. And you can use nonverbal cues to enhance your confidence confidence for you to fit in to a specific situation. But what these sources are not going to tell you is that faking it is not just about body language or the feelings. It is actually, you can do that in real life. So in 1964, a three-time dropout applied to a talent agency. One of the requirements for this job was that you needed to have a college degree. So he applied to a very lower tier position at this talent agency and he actually did receive a job. The thing is that he actually lied on his application. He said that he graduated from UCLA, which is around three months miles from this agency's headquarter. And now this guy was hired. He was working in the mailroom and every single time a letter came from UCLA saying that he never attended school there, he basically just intercepted it and no one actually ever was able to find out that he actually never went to UCLA. Eventually he ended up being extremely successful and he donated enough money to UCLA that they renamed a building after him. And you guys are probably gonna think it's crazy but this dude is worth 8.5 billion it's a pretty wild stat, but seven out of 10 employees have said that they lied on their resume, which led them to either get the job or get a higher tier job than what they were originally gonna get with their normal information. And unfortunately, it's a sad reality that those little vanity metrics still matter when it comes to, you know, getting a, a higher tier position or getting a higher salary. So at this point, you might be thinking, okay, there's no way most of these guys are actually able to be successful. Well, this is not just a corporate America, one of the great greatest of all times, Steve Jobs was known to fake a lot of his presentations. He would basically pull out the presentations before the product was even finished. And he would just, you know, see what the crowd says. And then he would use what the crowd, how they reacted to go and build that functionality within that product. The thing is that all of this is always an exaggeration. It was never that you are not able to achieve a certain thing. I mean, Steve Jobs didn't go out there knowing that he just did not have the engineering capability to uh, build whatever the functionality the crowd wanted. The thing is that if you do do this, you need to make sure that you have the confidence and the ability to do certain things that you're promising the world, that, hey, I am able to do this. And the crazy part is that this is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to people achieving crazy results, crazy amounts of success, just by faking it until they made it. Almost every successful social media app, their initial followers and the initial users were mostly fake. It was all a vanity metric to make other people feel like, hey, you know, a lot of other people are using it, so I should probably be using it. I mean, look at these apps now. I mean, they are a household name. They are worth billions and billions of dollars, and they just bring a crazy amount of revenue, and the founders who created them, I mean, they're, you can say they're very well off. And the thing is that this type of stuff still happens to this day on social media. I mean, have you ever seen there's like so many different services promising you, hey, you're gonna get a certain amount of views, certain amount of likes, certain certain amount of followers. I mean, heck, like Facebook as a whole, if you use Facebook, if you use the ad features in there, it literally, you are able to pay for 
other people to see your stuff. I mean, yeah, it's sad that most people have to go through all this just to prove that, you know, they're worth something, but it is a reality. I mean, this is a like human nature right here. And there are countless people, I mean, who started off like this and then that just became their own reality. They, they had a certain amount of followers, they had a certain amount of engagement and they worked extremely hard. I mean, this kind of motivated them to work hard and get to the point and actually just create their reality into this fakeness that they have created. So this company Statistica, they actually did a study in 2022 and uh, they found out that 58% of the, the large accounts on Instagram, they were actually involved in some sort of fraudulent slash bot activity to in order to increase the, the number of followers, engagement and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's a super wild stat. And this study also found out that 25% of all influencers actually had purchased fake followers in the past. And the motivation is fairly clear. I mean, it's that social proof that people are looking for. And this is something that I'm looking for as well. I mean, I'm not going out there and engaging it. So that's why I need your guys' help. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button and actually like this video. So I don't have to go out there and purchase these. I mean, let's just say if I had 400,000 subscribers instead of 4,000 followers, would you perceive this video a little bit differently? You might say, oh, absolutely not. I'm not like that. But in reality, it's just human nature. Yes, you would, because it's going to perceive as a higher quality. It's going to perceive as the, hey, uh, this is something that a lot of other people are, you know, interested in. So I probably have to be interested in. I mean, humans in general are social creatures. We hover towards what normies actually, like normal people actually are into. I mean, in this new era of influencer marketing, why do you think companies are spending so much money giving uh, to these influencers just to promote their products? Well, it's because again, you know, the same human nature of them flocking towards something that they're familiar with, flocking towards something that somebody they like is actually using. So that's why a lot of these uh, influencers ended up making huge brand deals. They get a lot of ad revenue just because, you know, they're helping out the brands a lot. I mean, they're making these brands into more of like household names, something that they associate their name with. And in general, it does it lead to a lot more sales than it would. Being an influencer is probably one of the only ways you can pretend to be more rich than you actually are, more attractive than you actually are. And this is something rappers have been doing for ages. And of course, you know, as you can tell, they just fake it until they eventually make it. So when it comes to music, a lot of this stuff is happening on a daily basis. So when an artist is dropping an album, a lot of the times, I mean, a lot of those streams are usually fake. There's actually bots out there who are just, you know, repetitively just playing that song over and over again. And it's technically considered a stream. But the thing is, you know, all those bots, eventually you make people believe that oh my god like a lot of these people are actually like loving this song and those since those numbers go up people are like oh wow I mean this is an extremely popular song what does this mean I guess I have to listen to it because all the normal human beings all the literally everyone in the world has listened to it everyone in the world is like you know this is the song of the year so I kind of have to uh, become normal I mean arrangements like buying and giving away a million Jay-Z records just for the album that moves to platinum within in a week? Well, I mean, it works. <laughs> And the thing is that a lot of the musicians have actually benefited from this faking it for years. But the thing is that, I mean, this type of misleading is actually not very harmful for anyone. Yes, it's misleading and all, but you know, it's not harming anyone out there with, if, you know, there's a million different random streams on this new rapper's album, right? But despite it not really mattering in music, this also happens in politics. And one of the best examples is Donald Trump. He's an amazing stuntman. He ran off as an image of him being an extremely successful businessman and I think you can comfortably say that Donald Trump is probably one of the best fake it till you make it person out there. I mean he faked himself into building an amazing personal brand. That personal brand then led to him making money through sponsorships and uh, endorsements and all that eventually just coiled into him becoming the president of the United States. Impressive but a lot of the times that this faking it until you making it personality in the wrong hands can actually lead to a lot of people just kind of getting wronged. And one of the biggest example right here is gonna be the company Enron. Enron was one of the biggest corporate fraud in American history. I mean, these guys basically just cooked their books and eventually, I mean, in their mind, it was like, hey, you know, eventually we're gonna make money and no one is ever gonna get caught of this. 
But as most of these stories end, I mean, uh, the company ended up filing bankruptcy and a lot of people actually lost a lot of money in this. If this type of stuff was happening in China, I would not really be surprised. I know a lot of the, the Chinese books are actually pretty cooked. But the thing is that this type of stuff happened in America in a democratic country. I mean, it's super wild to even see that, you know, stuff like this actually happens. But the thing is, it happens every single day and like you see it you we i mean we hear it in the news this happens every single day and but we just you know we just don't really understand what's been going on she took 10 billion dollars of funding from uh, venture capitalists uh, in order to make a company that was going to revolutionize the blood testing game but the thing is that she faked a lot of the tests results that were you know uh, being received and was not able to communicate that to the investors properly and you know what happens at the end. Uh, she got in trouble and uh, she got 11 years in prison. And the crazy part is that this happened in January 2022. You guys wanna know another example? I mean, this is a very recent one. So last year, there was an FTX collapse. I mean, the entire banking system in the United States actually almost collapsed. And this was all due to Sam Bankman Freed. I mean, this guy basically over leveraged and uh, tried to fake it till he make it. He was using a lot of the customer funds in order to pay off for, for leverage bets on uh, his and you know what happens when you take leverage bets on risky assets you know sometimes you get flushed out and when you get flushed out using uh, the customer funds what do you guys think happens I mean uh, people get angry things happen and everything just falls apart and this guy's uh, rotting in jail right now as well so what can we take away from all of this well we've seen guys like Donald Trump actually use this to increase their personal brand I mean all these course gurus are basically doing the same thing I mean they're basically renting Renting out Lamborghinis out there and uh, then they're selling you a course uh, to sell you the dream. Are they technically harming you? Not really. But I mean, are they faking it until they eventually make it? The thing is that a lot of these course sellers are making most of their money from course courses themselves. Are certain ethical boundaries being crossed? I mean, I would absolutely say so. Are these guys, you know, very successful in their specific craft? Does this still work? I mean, absolutely. It's because humans in general are uh, just attracted towards stuff like this. The thing is, the illusion of scarcity and the illusion of you just being looking huge can actually attract more people towards you. And that is just a sad reality of just human nature. So you do have to, a lot of the times, do do that in order to convince other people that, hey, come over here, you know, uh, this is this is what all the cool people are doing. So, you know, if you want to make a lot of money and uh, make a lot of money fast and actually be uh, more successful and just put your success success on a on a rampage you are gonna have to fake it until you make it guys but the thing is that there is a fine line between uh, just faking it till you making it and just straight up fraud and a lot of the times you know people are just going back and forth juggling back and forth the key takeaway here for you guys is that hey I'm gonna try to fake it until I make it the one thing that you have to make sure is that you're very very careful that you are not crossing any specific ethical boundaries super hard and uh, you are basically just improving the lives of other people improving your impact on the society in general and not scamming people scamming is not cool you're not gonna provide any value to the people and even if you are successful in scamming you're not gonna feel fulfilled and you your entire life you're just not gonna respect your own self so don't do that but if you use the fake until you make it strategy correctly I mean you guys are going to be ultra successful and if you use it as good as Donald Trump has done uh, you might even be elected president so let's go for it